Did you notice at the start of the gospel? Jesus got news that John was arrested. And just like that, everything changed. He withdrew, left Nazareth, went up north to the Lake District. Just like that. Just like that, Simon, Peter, and Andrew heard the invitation, following the lake of fishers of men. They left all their fishing stuff behind them. They followed them. Just like that. Further down the shore, James and John, with their dad, Jesus must have said something like, you stay here, but you guys follow me. Just like that. They left their gear, they left their dead, followed him. You know, maybe you've had a moment in your life, a critical moment, a sacred moment, when things changed dramatically. Maybe it was a terrible medical diagnosis. Maybe it was a declaration that, oh, we made a mistake. Maybe it hit the jackpot one day. Maybe it was a terrible heartbreak, the loss of a child. Sometimes we have these moments where everything seems to change. And my experience is, even the most difficult experiences like that prove to be blessings in the long run. For over a hundred years now, we have had an active, an eight-day week praying for Christian unity. That all these divisions among us Christians might come to an end and we might fulfill the little prayer of Jesus in John 17, that they be one, Father, as you are in me and I am in you. That prayer of Christian unity always ends January 25th, yesterday, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. We talk about a moment just like that. There he was, hunting Christians down to take them back in chains to Jerusalem for punishment. Just like that. He's struck. He's blind. And he hears, why are you persecuting me? Well, who are you? I'm Jesus when you're persecuting me. Just like that, it changed. Friday, it was the feast of the preacher of my community. The feast of St. Francis de Sales. The painting next to the reconciliation room of that young man many years ago, that is St. Francis de Sales, a college student in Paris. And that would have been late 1500s. He experienced something that college students still experience today. He showed up on campus and all of a sudden was bombarded by ideas that were not only new, but very threatening to what he believed and how he had lived. So he showed up on campus. And my assumption is it wasn't so much in the classroom his chatter among students, he suddenly confronted with John Calvin's doctrine of predestination. If you're predestined from heaven for heaven, you're not me. If you're not, you can't do a darn thing about it. And for whatever reason, that young college student was convinced that he was not among the saved. 
in one of his letters, he even mentions that it lasted about six weeks. He was serious. He wasn't eating. He wasn't sleeping. And honestly, people thought he was going to die. And this is the moment when he came into this church in Paris, went up to the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There happened to be a copy of the memorandum there. And he prayed that prayer. Remember, Mary, never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection was left unaided. And just like that, it didn't all change. But just like that, it began to change. Somehow hope the possibility emerged within me. And if you can imagine, this college student finally came to this posture. Lord, even if I can't serve you in eternity, I will give my life to serve you here. And he most certainly did. A few years ago, Pope Francis declared this the Word of God Sunday. I haven't studied the details of all of that, but of course, every Sunday, we have the Word of God. And I suppose very few of you don't have the Word of God right at home. A Bible. Twelve or thirteen of them, maybe. The Word of God. After the first two readings, the reader always declares, this is the Word of the Lord. And we always claim back, thanks be to God. But you know how it is. Over and over again. Back in my high school teaching and ministry days, I did a lot of retreats. And very often, we'd have mass together. When the first reading ended, I'd kind of hold the reader up and say, just a second. And I'd turn to the, to the students there, what was that reading about? And the usual response was something like, <laughs> Nobody ever said this out loud, but they could read their minds. You mean we were supposed to listen? <laughs> Sometimes somebody would be able to say, oh, good, good. But then I'd have the reader read the reading again. Oh. Oh. This is the word of the Lord. It's a little bit like a new song. You hear a new song you like. You know, you catch a few words. That's nice, that's nice. But you don't have all the words. And if you work at it hard enough, listen enough, or maybe Google it, you finally get the words. And sometimes it's like, wow. Wow. Sometimes it's, what? <laughs> Read the word. Watch this. I'm not the strongest guy in the world to look. <laughs> you can open this. <laughs> That's all it takes. Please. Don't think. Oh my gosh, now I have to read the whole Bible. Well, you don't. It's a good thing to do that. But it's not a project. This is a love letter. Flip it open. Especially near the bad New Testament. Or go to the index. Find a book that you've heard about and check it out. Seriously, if you start reading and you get to a part that's just deadly, <coughs> tedious, thousand names, 
skip somewhere else. There's a message in here for you. As much as there was for Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John and Paul and Francis de Sales, it's the word of the Lord. It's a call to life. The best advice I ever got in reading scripture is sit down, decide you know, how long you're going to read, and read until something strikes you. And then sort of chew on that. Don't be in a rush to plow through. Let it touch you. Just one more quick story about another saint. St. Anthony of Egypt. Not to be confused with the lost and found St. Anthony of Padua. We celebrated his feast day about 10 days ago. He died in the 300s at the age of 105. Now, Anthony's parents had passed away, and they had left him and his younger sister very, very comfortable. Choice property, a couple hundred acres, beautiful home, and wealth. Anthony was pondering this very scripture reading. How those apostles, those fishermen, left everything behind and followed him. Well, the next time he went to church, he heard the gospel of the rich young man. If you want to be perfect, well, sell what you have, give the money to the poor, and come and follow me. So he did. Sold all these possessions, gave the money to the poor. But he didn't sell everything because he had to take care of his sister. Next time he went to church, he heard this. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. Well, the kind of guy Anthony was, he sold the rest of it. Made provisions for his sister. And spent the next 90 years. 85 years laying down his life for the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. It's yours. But be careful. Because just like that, you might just change your life. But a treasure it is. May God bless us all.